Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We've gathered here this evening to observe a death, to behold in in spirit our Lord and Savior Jesus dying on the cross on a barren and rocky hillside outside the city of Jerusalem, gathered there together with his mother, a couple of his friends, and others of his followers. As we see him there, hanging on the cross, breathe his last. We're mindful of two great truths that the writer to the Hebrews calls to our attention, that Jesus died for us and with us. Just as he lived for us and with us, just as he was tempted for us and with us, so also he suffers and dies for us and with us. As we see him hanging there on the cross in great agony, we feel sympathy for him in his suffering. But more important than us feeling sympathy for him is to realize that he feels sympathy for us and with us. The writer of the Hebrews says, We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet without sin. So let us approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Yes, Jesus knows what it's like to live live here on this sin-filled earth. and He knows what it's like to die. Think about the, the scene of Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane on that Maundy Thursday evening, the, the night before he died. Maybe you've seen some, some paintings of that scene, and if you remember any of those paintings, maybe you remember that in some of those, at least some of those artistic depictions of that scene, you see Jesus kind of with a, a serene look on his face, uh, maybe with his hair and his robes all, all neat and tidy, But as we read the the Bible's description of that scene, we get an entirely different depiction than that kind of painting. As we read from this section of the, the writer to the Hebrews about Jesus at that time, says he offered prayers and pleas with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And the gospel books of the Bible, which record the the life of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they tell us that on that evening, Jesus began to be troubled and distressed. And he said that he was very sorrowful, even to the point of death. That is to say that he was so distressed and so overcome with sorrow that that he felt like he was going to die. and, And he knew, in fact, that his death was impending. And we read in Matthew's description of of that event in the Garden of Gethsemane that Jesus went a little farther, fell on his face, and prayed. And so it's not a pretty picture. It wasn't neat and tidy and serene. It shows a person who was greatly distraught. Yes, Jesus knows what it's like to suffer. He knows what it's like to be under the stresses and the pressures of life. Now, in our lives, we might feel sometimes that, that no one is really able to understand exactly what we're going through. And in, in some cases, that might be true. You, your experience, your suffering may be totally unique to you. Or, or at the very least, it's probably very true that for many experiences, you simply have to go through it yourself in order to to even begin to understand the full impact of of what it's like. For example, to to experience the death of a spouse or the death of a child. What it's like to to be fired from your job and not to know where your next meal is going to come from. What it's like to be 
racked with the, the disease of cancer. What it's like to, to face the sadness of, of the rebellion of a child. Or the rejection of a significant other. Or the desertion of a spouse. Or the hatred of a, of a brother or sister. The betrayal of a close friend. The temptation to do what is wrong. Addiction to, to drugs or to alcohol. The loneliness of old age. You have to go through these things, experience these things yourself in order to to fully know and understand the feelings that those circumstances bring. Well, this text from Hebrews chapters 4 and 5 wonderfully expresses the fact that Jesus, our great high priest, sympathizes with our weaknesses. It says, he has been tempted in every way just as we are yet without sin. He went through all of it with us. He's able to to feel with us, to sympathize with us. He was a true man with with real flesh and blood, and he lived in our real sin-filled world and, and dealt with real sinful people every day of his life. As we read in the Gospels, he experienced frustration and anger, disappointment, weariness, weakness, and sorrow. He went through the the whole spectrum of human emotions and experiences of life. And so now he can sympathize with us and empathize with us. The wonderful truth is that somehow Jesus was tempted and, and tested and tried in every way, just as we are, and yet, through it all, he was without sin. His entire life was one of sympathizing with us. As our high priest, he knows what it's like to be tempted. He knew what it was like to be tempted as a little child to to disobey his parents and others in authority. As a teenager, to, to rebel against that authority. He knew what it was like as a young man to be tempted to, to self centeredness. And as an adult, to be tempted to, to riches and fame and glory. He knows all of those temptations because he went through them all himself. He was tempted in every way, just as we are. So Jesus sympathizes with our weaknesses because he experienced the same sorrow, frustration, fatigue, disappointment, pain, and stress of life. He tasted life in all of its bitterness. And finally, He tasted death for everyone. He knows. He understands. He feels. He sympathizes. Just as he suffered for us, so he also experienced everything with us. And even now, as we look at the cross, we see a man dying like so many other men. Because he is sharing the death experience with all of humanity. The death experience that we all must eventually endure ourselves. So we know God proves it to us through Jesus. That he is not far removed from us or detached from us and uncaring about us and our lives and the the troubles we go through and the challenges we face. He's not impersonal and, and detached and distant from us. Or worse, vindictive and judgmental and looking to punish us for every infraction. He is a merciful high priest, sympathetic with our human suffering and weaknesses. But as the writer to the Hebrews tells us, unlike us, Jesus was tempted in every way and yet in every situation did not sin. Think about how the the devil gets to us so often. The devil knows our weaknesses and he he does everything he can. He uses every trick that he can to exploit those weaknesses of ours. He knows where we are most vulnerable to his attacks. And we might wonder sometimes as, as we as we see the lives of the people around us, we might look at them and and wonder how they can possibly be so weak and fall into that kind of sin a kind of a sin and a temptation that we have no weakness for. 
Perhaps they also look at our lives and wonder the same thing about us, how we can be so weak in in an area that they have no weakness or, or special temptation to fall into sin. The devil is very crafty. He tempts us not to take sin too seriously, just to think of it as, as not a big deal. Think about the, the way that people in our society in, in general think about sin. Most people would probably readily admit that nobody's perfect, and that includes me, I'm not perfect. But then when you get down to the matter of sin, well, not as many people want to admit that they are sinful and deserving of eternal punishment in hell because of their sins. Yeah, they admit that they make mistakes, but they don't want to admit that their moral failures, their transgressions of God's law, prevent them from getting to heaven on their own. We can also subconsciously at least fall into that kind of thinking too. May God the Holy Spirit give us insight to to recognize the true seriousness of our sin, to to recognize all of the many times that we succumb to those temptations of the devil and of our own sinful nature in the world around us. Yeah, the the devil is very crafty, and he soon finds our, our areas of weaknesses and seeks to exploit them, and before we realize it, we're, we're falling into sin and we're, we're coming up with justification or rationalizations for our sins and we're making excuses for them. We begin to doubt God's promises. Maybe we either doubt his judgment and his righteous anger against sin or, or perhaps we doubt that he can forgive a sinner such as me. We find ourselves lying again, swearing again, drinking again, lusting again, Deceiving again, being spiteful and resentful again, feeling an attitude of self-righteousness again, indulging again, forsaking God again. As we see our sin, how great it is to see this description of Jesus as being without sin. That he was tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. He overcame. He was not overcome by sin. And so as a result, he has become the source of eternal salvation for everyone who obeys him. Without him as the source, there is no salvation. Look again at the cross. There he dies for you, even as he dies with you. He is the great high priest, holy, innocent, pure, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens, as we read in Hebrews chapter 7. He is the great high priest who gives up himself upon the altar of the cross as the sacrifice, sacrificing himself in our place, for our sins. And since we have a great high priest like this who sympathizes with us, who is the source of salvation for us, then let us approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Mercy and grace from God go together. Jesus looks down and and he sees our fallen condition and and our sinful nature. He has mercy on us. He gives us grace to help in time of need. Jesus took on human flesh and blood so that, as we read in Hebrews chapter 2, through death, he could destroy the one who had the power of death, that is the devil and free those who were held in slavery all their lives by fear of death. In his mercy and grace, he came to our rescue and he delivered us from sin and death. We need that kind of mercy and grace. And he graciously and mercifully gives it to us. Thank God that he assures us that he will help us in time of need. 
What's also very interesting about this text is that we see that through his suffering, Jesus learned something. Imagine that, the, the all-knowing, all-powerful, eternal Son of God himself learned obedience. Now, of course, as, as we see clearly portrayed in the Bible, all throughout his entire life, Jesus was obedient. He was obedient to his mother and his adoptive father. He was obedient to his heavenly father. We see that throughout his earthly ministry, everything that he did was in obedience to the will of his heavenly father. And now we see in these last hours before his death, even in the midst of, of tears and cries and pleas with God, if it's possible to let there be some other way to take this cup of suffering from him, even in the midst of that great anguish of bearing the burden of the sins of the whole world, he learns obedience. As a true human being, he learned how truly hard it is sometimes to say to God, not my will, but your will be done. But he said it. And as a result, as we read in these verses, he became the source of salvation for all who believe. Because he was obedient to the point of death, even that most shameful kind of death on the cross, a, a spectacle for public scorn and mockery, because of that, God exalted him to the highest place, placing him above everything in all creation. Jesus suffered for us and with us. And now we also suffer with him and for him. Through our suffering, we learn obedience as his dearly loved sons and daughters, just as he learned obedience. As we pass through in our lives one difficult testing and temptation after another, we grow in the maturity of our faith in him and in his promises, just as he grew to perfect maturity and was made perfect through suffering. We receive mercy and help in every time of need from our great high priest, Jesus, because he knows exactly what we are going through in every situation. And this evening, we pause and look again at the cross. We see Jesus there experiencing the pain and agony of a dying man, of, of a dying man who was being punished in an excruciating way for the sins of the entire world. He put on our flesh and blood in order to do that, to take our place in suffering and death. He walked in our footsteps. He shared our stresses. He died our death with us and for us. And he is now our great high priest. He is the source of eternal salvation for us. And so now when you come to him in prayer and you pour out your troubles, you ask for his help, he knows exactly what you're talking about because he himself has experienced all of it. And so as the writer to the Hebrews exhorts us, may we also approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen.